Hi everybody, today I want to talk about uh, the High Court findings. This um, minister, Karen Chaw, cannot be summoned to the Waitangi Tribunal and I want to talk about this article because it's very, very important. There's Karen and she's in completely in the right fighting to not be summoned by the Waitangi Tribunal. And so it says the High Court has ruled Children's Minister Karen Chaw cannot be compelled to appear before the Waitangi Tribunal. In a just released decision, Justice Andrew Isaac granted the Crown application for judicial review, setting aside the summons issued by the Tribunal. So the, the Tribunal just said to Karen Cho, you've got to come and report to us and we're going to, it's like an inquisition. And uh, so there's a, there was a really big problem with this because the Tribunal was is not a court and it was um, going outside the bounds of its jurisdiction by doing that. But he added the mana of the tribunal and the importance of its work has not was not dis diminished by his decision. Now, there's a problem right here because this judge is an activist judge. Now, as you know, the judges in New Zealand are appointed by the um, uh, Attorney General and they're approved by the um, Governor General, and David Parker was the Labour Minister who was the um, um, Attorney General 2017 to 2023, and he was a known activist. So look at that. This um, uh, this activist is using judge is using Maori words to um, describe his decision. The Judicial Review challenged the unprecedented request from the Tribunal earlier this month to, for, for Chua to appear before it an urgent inquiry about the government's decision to repeal Section 7AA of the Oranga Tamariki Act. It summoned the Minister to, to appear on Friday. Um, and if you know anything, if you want to know about that, what that Act is, that Act 7AA basically says that um, you know, Maori children have got to go to Maori families and Karen Shaw argued and said no, they've got to go to the best family, it doesn't matter about their ethnicity. And of course she's 100% right about that. That section requires the agency to have regard to its treaty obligations, here we go, ensuring that it takes into account the whakapapa of children, Maori children and reduces disparities for Tamariki Maori. Well, let me tell you this about the treaty obligations. The the obligations of the Crown towards Maori, there are only uh, four of them. Uh, the, the, uh, there's only four obligations that the Crown has towards Maori. One was to set up a government. What, secondly, to um, be the government. Thirdly, to buy land off Maori. And fourthly, to make Maori um, citizens of the uh, of, uh, of British citizens. You could add, add a fifth one in there, and that is to protect Maori property. But it's gone way beyond that now. Uh, to It's been stretched out of shape and beyond anything imaginable and has gone now to what they call Ta'onga, T-A-O-N-G-A. Uh, and that means that basically anything that Maori treasure or want is now a treaty obligation and that is completely false that was there was nothing like that in the original February the 6th Treaty of Waitangi so treaty obligations have um, stretched out of sight and out of all proportion and become anything that Maori want and of course this is completely wrong in a brief statement the minister said she welcomed the decision not for her own but for the constitutional clarity it provided for New Zealand what she means by that is She's um, happy about that uh, because it, it clarifies what are the boundaries of the Waitangi Tribunal and what they're not. And But this judge goes on to say these things here. She said because parties have the right to appeal, she is limited in what comments she can make. Well, in his decision, Justice Isaac said he was required to answer two questions. Firstly, was the evidence that would be provided by the summons relevant in light of the material already provided by, by, by the tribe to the tribunal by the Crown. And what he was saying was, um, he said, yeah, there was enough material provided by the Crown and she didn't need to be summoned. And secondly, did, a, did issuing a summons infringe the principle of comity 
the mutual restraint and respect between the branches of the, of the government. In making his decision, Justice Isaac said he was unable to accept the minister's submission that the summons was unlawful in this case because there was already other relevant evidence available to the tribunal. So, um, Karen Chaw said the minister's submission uh, um, that the summons was unlawful well, he, he actually is challenging that, this judge. And I think it was unlawful. I think it was um, unlawful that the Waitangi Tribunal summons to her. And this is one of the things that Shane Jones and David Seymour are wanting to sort. They're wanting to go into the tribunal, kick butt and take names. And they're going to pull them into line and show them exactly what their boundaries are and what they're not. Because I believe this judge has made a a um, uh, an unlawful um, decision here because he's saying it, it it was lawful of the tribunal to actually summon Karen Chaw and I believe that's not, not correct. But he accepted the Crown's second argument of comity noting there were limits on, on their power to summon. This included wh whether the evidence was clearly necessary, a high test a higher test than mere relevance. In other words, it all, it all has to do with has the tribunal got enough information from the Crown about a decision they want to make? I believe it's nothing. It's it's not that. I believe that the tribunal does not have the jurisdiction and the power to summons people. It's simply an organisation that was set up to uh, provide information to the government and to provide um, reports to the government, but it has no power to make the government do anything, nothing at all. It's just an advisory body. That's how it was set up in 1975. He also noted that a summons could not put the minister in, conf uh, in conflict with collective responsibility and cap cabinet confidentiality. Had I concluded that the lack of evidence would affect the tribunal's ability to discharge its statutory functions, I would have dismissed the application for judicial review, Justice Isaac said. It goes without saying then that the power of the tribunal to summons a serving minister to attend and give evidence under compulsion, if clearly necessary, is very much alive. Well, there's a crucial thing for him to say. In other words, he is challenging this. We could highlight that. He is challenging that and he is saying that the tribunal does have a right to compel people to come to the to it and I say that's wrong and um, I say that Shane Jones and David Seymour need to absolutely rein this tribunal in and rein these activist judges in so they cannot go making decisions like this and then what we we um, end up with is a whole lot of Tipati Mari spokeswoman for children Big Maori name said tonight's court decision to overturn the summons had enabled the Crown to continue making decisions about Maori without evidence. Typical nonsense from the Maori party. And um, the judicial system has this evening told the nation that the government can do whatever they want when it comes to decisions for Maori without evidence and without including us in the conversation. It's enabled another, it's enabling another stolen generation. Well, this lady needs to know the um, needs to know the Treaty of Waitangi, because in the Treaty of Waitangi, the they the chiefs gave the responsibility of governing New Zealand to the Crown, and that means that the chiefs and the peop Maori people and all the people of New Zealand were to submit to the government, and obey the government and support the government, not not do what this lady's doing, which is saying we don't accept the decision. Kappa Kingi said, repealing the Section 7AA is to continue the Crown's rotten agenda that harms our vulnerable Maori babies and oppresses children. Have you ever heard anything so ridiculous when actually the truth of the matter is that social, social statistics show that uh, Maori children are in most danger when they're in Maori families? And so actually, Karen Shaw is doing the right thing by... Uh, saying we need the best families to look after uh, these children, not just um, putting them in families by ethnicity. Because you could be putting 
uh, you know, a, a lovely child into a terrible Maori family where it's going to get bashed and beaten. No, we're not accepting that. This decision, she says, socks it to the nation and Maori babies with the government's idiopathic agenda to steal the right Tam Tamariki Maori have to be with Whakapapa and the organisational duty to uphold the Treaty of Waitangi. Where on earth in the Treaty of Waitangi does it say that the government is to put, um, make sure that Maori foster children are put with Maori families? This is getting ridiculous. Kapa Kingi said it was only fair to summons the minister to present evidence before the tribunal on behalf of the government. It was sheer arrogance for the minister and her government to refuse um, to appear. Well, she doesn't know anything about the treaty. She knows nothing about the law and she's going off half cocked. And of course, lots of hyperbole, lots of exaggerations, lots of absolutely stupid things she's saying. And that's what we can expect from Te Party Māori uh, members. This government is on a fast track to destruction and are, and are willingly trying to create yet another stolen generation of Māori babies. Well, it goes from the sublime to the ridiculous. Uh, what Karen Chuor is doing, and she's actually doing the right thing where you need to support her and encourage her, is she's wanting to put babies into the best homes uh, that there is available and it doesn't matter what ethnicity that home is. Um, and Karen is actually a somebody who's been through the welfare system when she was a child, so she knows all about it. She's well qualified. So good on you, David Seymour. Good on you, Shane Jones, especially. Not backing down, doubling down, and not letting this... Tr this tribunal wants to become a bit of a, a bully, an intimidator, pushing the government around, telling it what to do. And it's all part of um, the thin end of the wedge of... Uh, tribal rule and we should reject it outright and not give it any airtime at all.